Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church at Home. Welcome to Catalyst Vineyard Church. My name is Chuck. This is the lovely Taryn. Uh, and uh, welcome to the party. Um, oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful that you're here with us this morning. So just to give you a heads up, today's the first of the month, which means for our church family that it's Communion Sunday. And so if you haven't got communion already prep why don't you run and do that now uh grab something that you can drink and something you can eat maybe some juice or wine bread or a cracker something like that and we're going to be taking communion later today which is going to be good it's really good it's really good also we know that there are many many of you who are new to our church and if we were meeting in one of our sites today we would be waving around one of these bags and we will be saying, if you're new to our church, we'd love for you to pick up our welcome pack. Well, our team have been working really hard to put this welcome pack online. And so if you head over to our website, click on hi, then you will get a digital format of this welcome pack. And we would love for you to read it, have a look at it. There's also a card that we call the count me in card. And if you want to join our church family, you want to be part of the family, then all you have to do is fill it in. And that's your way of telling us that you want to join the family. And we'd love that. Yeah, absolutely. And you could be anywhere in the world and, and still do that. You could. Which is wild. Who would have thought? <laughs> Um, yeah, so we have for, well, I don't know for how long exactly, but at least 15 years or more, we have had a food bank as part of our church called Storehouse. And we've been collecting food from people within our church community largely, and then giving that out to people around and about who really needed it. And, and well, I mean, it's just grown and grown over the years. And, and certainly for the last five or six years, we've given away more than 10 tons worth of food to people who really needed it. Well, um, obviously, when this crisis started, uh, the need for food went up dramatically. And, and we became aware from all kinds of different sources that there were people who, who were just had nothing to eat. Um, and, and so that became a bit of a worry, like, where are we going to find enough food for all of these people? But of course, God, in his kindness, has been guiding the whole plan and 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 helping us to figure it all out and so uh, what's happened is that as well as getting food from supermarkets and all these kinds of places um people have started putting out bins or uh, buckets or crates outside their homes and just letting their neighbors know on the neighborhood whatsapp or whatever hey listen we're collecting food to give to people and so masses and masses of people have, have done that and the food is significantly increased. We wanted to show you what that looks like. And so Jim and Adrian Purdy, the living legends, Jim and Adrian Purdy, who are part of our Aberdeen Central site, they have filmed a little video to show what it's really like. Over to you, Jim and Adrian. Hi, for those of you who don't know us, I'm Adrienne. I'm Jim. And we're the parties and we go to the central site at Catalyst Vineyard Church in Aberdeen. Um, we just wanted to let you know um, about something that's been happening on our driveway, which has just blown us away. Um, and to encourage you guys, um, about a week and a half ago, it was Good Friday, we uh, were down at the church and realised um, that the storehouse food bank, the demand for food was beginning to outstrip the supply of the food that was coming in because lots of people aren't at church at the moment. So James and Julie, two of the site pastors, had had the idea to put bins on their driveways and so we nicked a very good idea um, and did the same. So we just take the food straight from the bins into the car. That keeps it safe. It also means we don't have to take it into the house. To get the thing started, um, I put a photograph of the bin on Facebook. I uh, WhatsApped um, my walking group ladies who live locally and we put a little note round our neighbours' doors. There's probably about 60 households in our street and from there it seems to have gone viral. Um, they've shared it with other um, local street WhatsApp groups and one church has even put it on their uh, local newsletter. And so we're now beginning to see people arrive and put um, food in the bin who we have no connection with and that is just so encouraging and so amazing and I think that's the reason for that is people are looking to help during this crisis and this is quite an easy way for them to be able to do that. We're so proud of all uh, that you're doing um, and everyone who is involved yeah. in this. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. So, so far, 
Um, we are providing food for 186 households. That's 524 individuals mm. who really need that food. And actually every week, the number is growing. So it's approaching about a ton of food a week that is being given out all across the city and the Shire from Lawrence Kirk all the way up to Ellen and across uh, the Shire as well. So it is absolutely fantastic uh, what is happening. It's scary though, isn't it? The need that that uh, represents. Uh, it, re it really is. And, uh, and people are so unbelievably grateful, aren't they? Yeah. And actually we were able to give out Easter eggs a couple of weeks ago. And mm. for some people that was just a highlight of their week to receive an Easter egg. Yeah. So listen, if you would like to donate food to the Storehouse Food yeah. Bank, then just go on our website or, or our social media pages and you will find details of where our vans are collecting from uh, and also where our, our kind of central building is where you can drop food off. Um, that's the first thing. If you would like to put a bin or a crate outside your house and um, you would like to just print off a little, what do you call it? Like a label, sign. a sign, print off a sign and stick it to the crate to make it sort of look like it's actually a genuine thing, then you can get that information also from our website. If you go to the website, click on Feedback. Food Bank, then you'll find a little thing that you can print off. Yeah. And then you can collect the food and then bring it uh, to wherever we're collecting from. Yeah, that's great. And have you said if you need food? Oh, no, I haven't. You're absolutely right. Mm. How rude of me. If, <laughs> to be honest, there will be people watching yeah. this who need food. There's, uh, or you it, might just be struggling and you're yeah. thinking, oh, I'm not sure. Please do contact us yeah. if that's you. Please do that. Yeah. Please do that. And so the way that you do that is if you're watching this live right now uh, and, uh, well, if you are watching this live, then you can click on connect yeah. and just make yourself, no, just leave your details there and we'll get some food to you. Or if you're not watching this live, you can just go to our website or to hello.catalyst.vin and fill in your details. Yeah. So Chuck, tell us your top tips for getting through this next little while. Okay. Well, yeah. By next little while, you mean <laughs> however long this live stream goes on We have no idea how long it's going on for. We have no <laughs> idea. Uh, in so many ways, we've got no idea. As you can tell. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a couple of tips, which we say every week. The first thing is God's here. God is here. And he's not just here, like he's Everywhere. with you too. Mm -hmm in your living room or your bedroom or wherever you are right now. And so the first tip is open up your life to him, like open up your heart, just be fully present to this moment. That's the first thing. The other thing is um, feel free to chat on the chat thing if you're watching this live. And um, if you'd like someone to pray with, then that would be our privilege. We have pastors standing by to do that. All you have to do is click on live prayer. That's what it's called, live prayer, and then that will connect you with someone. And, and um, sometimes it takes a bit of a while, there's a bit of a delay because lots of people are using it. Just be patient. And also just to let you know, if you can't find where the chat for the prayer thing is happening, it's you'll find a little coloured circle in between the word chat and notes. Yeah. Chat and notes, there's a little, so, so that's where you'll find it. Wonderful, well done, darling. <laughs> Good explanation. This is gripping, <laughs> isn't it? You can see the numbers just like, <laughs> like oh, people are like, oh my goodness, this is so dry. <laughs> so. so in a moment, we are going to worship the Lord. And uh, Chris and Emma Morton from my Inverurie site are going to lead us in worship, which will be wonderful. But yeah. before we worship the Lord, why don't we pray together? And Lord... We know that when everything around us is shaking, you are unshakable. And so this morning, we choose to fix our eyes on you. We choose to look to you. We choose to worship you. We choose to put our hope in you. We choose to say, we trust you, God. We worship you and we love you. Amen. Amen. Let's worship.
God who comes to say is He to set the captives free. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's rolling with power and fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before. stop the Lord Almighty who can 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 stop the Lord Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb.
You stand with victory in your hands You've already won You've already won You hold victory in your hands And isn't he beautiful? Isn't he wonderful? Shouldn't we stand and know Or fall to our knees before him Oh isn't he beautiful Oh isn't he wonderful Oh shouldn't we stand in all Or fall to our knees before him Oh If you're weary So come if you're tired Just come as you are now For there's freedom here to find And God of freedom let your freedom come There is nothing That you can lift us from You're all that we need And you are stronger Than anything we face Christ within us Strength to run this race you're all that we need For you're all that we need 
And Lord, that is the truth. You are all that we need. You are our strength when we are weak. You bring hope when we feel hopeless. Thank you, Lord, that you are not only God, you are not only mighty, you are not only King of kings and Lord of lords, but you call us your friends. And you invite us into the most amazing, wonderful journey. Mm. And we delight in you Mm. this morning. And we declare that you are all that we need. Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay. So um, every week we are asking um, members of our congregation to... uh, pray, basically. Um, There may be key workers or people who are um, under a huge amount of pressure right now. And this week, we've asked uh, the amazing Elsa Harrison if uh, she would pray. Uh, Elsa is a doctor and uh, she works in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. And uh, over to you. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for our National Health Service. Thank you, Lord, that we live in a country that has resources and systems in place to help in the fight against this virus. And Lord, we lift up all NHS staff to you, to those working in GP practices, in pharmacies, throughout our communities and in our hospitals. And Lord, we pray that your presence would be with them. Lord, we pray against fear and we pray your peace and your protection upon them as they go about their day-to-day work. Lord, would they be your hands and feet. And Father, we pray for staff and for patients alike that they would turn to you at this time. That those who don't know you, Lord, would meet with you for the first time. We pray for all those who are patients in our hospitals and those who are recovering at home. And Lord, we boldly ask for your healing. We pray that you would heal them completely in Jesus' name. And we also remember those families who have relatives in hospital at the moment, who are unable to be with them in the way that they might want to be at this time. And Lord, we pray for strength and encouragement for them. We lift up all those in leadership in our NHS, both nationally and here in NHS Grampian. And Lord, we pray for wisdom for them. Lord, we pray that in all those meetings where those really difficult decisions have to be made, Father, would you have a seat at the table? So in these most uncertain of times, we look to you, our everlasting Father, and ask, Lord, that you would guide us and guide our NHS in the days to come. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the part of our time together where we're going to read the Bible. And so if you've got a Bible hiding on your coffee table, now is the moment to (laughs) whip it out. Uh, Or if you don't have a Bible, then order one or download one. Download one from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, It'll be completely free. And we'd love you to have a Bible in your house. We believe that this book changes lives because we believe that God meets people yeah. in its pages. And so get yourself a Bible. Now we've been uh, looking at a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote whilst he was in lockdown in prison, his letter to the Philippians. And even though we've been in lockdown for about 300 years, we're still in <laughs> chapter one. So Philippians <laughs> chapter one is where we are. I promise you, we don't know anything about when this lockdown say. is gonna end. Uh, it's not like we're going really slowly because we know anything. Uh, but uh, Philippians chapter one, I'm gonna read from verses, verse 18 and a half. And it says this, Paul says this, 
He says, I will continue to rejoice. Remember, he's in prison. I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will be in no way ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it's more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. That's God's word to us today. So the question that I think this passage answers, and it's a question that actually is very real for many of you, I'm sure, who are joining us this morning, is this. How do I find strength in this season? And in particular, how do I find strength in this season if it's a season of suffering? You know, often in times of danger or difficulty or drought, it feels like we're kind of hanging on by our fingernails and hoping we'll get through. And so this question of how do I find strength in seasons of suffering is actually a big deal. Now, I'll just be completely honest and say that this lockdown is at worst like a minor inconvenience for me. You know, like I, even though my calling involves being often found in groups of people, actually, I, I, I'm quite shy. I like my own space. I'm a bit of an introvert. You know, given the choice between going out to a party on Saturday night and just having a quiet night in, I'm going to choose a quiet night in every time. You know, like when we heard that this lockdown thing was happening, I was like, so let me get this right. No touching, no hugging, <laughs> no big crowds, uh, stay at home, uh, you know, uh, save the NHS, protect the NHS, save lives. I was like, to be honest, I've been in training for this my whole life. Uh, and so for me, it's not a big deal. But, but I understand that for lots of people, it's just not a joke. Yeah. This is a, a really tough time. We are aware that there are people in our church right now who have lost their jobs. Yeah. Uh, and there are many, many more people who are not sure whether they'll have a job next week or next month or, or next year. Um, we are aware of people in our church family who are married, but they're having to live in separate homes at the moment because one of them is a key worker and the other one has an underlying health issue. We're aware of people in our church who are really unwell and other people who have loved ones who are really unwell. We know of people who, uh, you know, for whom the, the issue is really to do with mental health and, and this lockdown is really not helping that. And then of course we're aware of people for whom they, they had pre-existing stuff going on. You know, like we, we know people who were really in a, a season of grief when this thing already hit and other people who are fighting cancer regardless of whether it's a lockdown or not. And so this question of how do I find strength in a season of suffering is a relevant question. It's a question for all of us right now. And, and if, if we were going to look at or, or try and find one book of the Bible that gave an insight into suffering and the, the theme of suffering, then we might look towards the Old Testament book of Job. Uh, it's written Job but we say it as Job. I've got a degree in theology. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, Job is a godly guy. You know, actually it says that he is blameless and upright. He, it says that he feared God and shunned evil. A and actually his life up until a particular point has, has been a life of blessing and uh, a life of joy. And then one particular day, his whole world kind of caves in on itself. And, and what transpires is that there's a tragic accident and a whole bunch of his close family, his loved ones are killed. And then on top of that, it turns out that on the same day, his business just implodes. And then also on top of all of that, 
his own health begins to deteriorate and he begins to live in constant and chronic pain. Now, we've been pastors for a long time. And what we see is that that kind of thing happens all the time. You know, often it's not, you kind of think, well, I could cope with one thing happening in my life, but it's not just one thing. It's a whole series of things. It's like life sees that you're down and decides to give you a kicking whilst you're there. And um, often in these moments where, where life kind of just suddenly becomes a struggle, we begin to have big questions. Like, what, why is this happening? And why is this happening to me? You know, did I do something to deserve this? Or those kinds of questions. And, and in the book of Job, this poor man who suddenly life is a struggle for, uh, his friends gather around him and they try to help him. And the way that they try to help him is that they try to give him advice. And they try to explain the reasons for the distress that he's experiencing. And um, to be honest with you, that they're, they're, they're puny excuses. They're, they're, they're rubbish reasons. They're, they're, they're just clutching at straws. They don't really understand. And eventually, after chapters and chapters of these just inadequate explanations, it actually says... God spoke to Job out of the storm. And actually, God never explains why it's happening. It remains a mystery. But God is there and he's present and he's powerful and he's kind. and He's faithful and he's loving. And uh, you never find out why it's all happened. Um, I actually think that the book of Job ultimately teaches us three things about suffering. The first thing is suffering's a mystery. There are no neat explanations, no quick answers. Secondly, I think the book of Job teaches us that God is present with us in our suffering and in our pain. And the third thing that I think that the book of Job teaches us about suffering is that it is possible to get through suffering with dignity and continuing to honour God throughout. Those are such helpful things to think about. Now, why am I talking about Job, you might ask, when uh, I've just read from Philippians? Well, actually, it seems to me that the Apostle Paul, who himself is experiencing this horrendous suffering, uh, um, chained hand and foot in prison himself, not knowing whether he's going to live or die. It seems to me that he has been meditating on the book of Job. We know that Paul was um, a Pharisee by training, which means that he'd, he'd been educated in all of the finest rabbinical schools of his day. We know that he'd been educated by Gamaliel, who was a very well-known rabbi. So it's very likely that not only was Paul deeply familiar with the book of Job, but actually it's very likely that he knew the whole of Job off by heart. And so here he is in prison and you're able to reflect on and chew over, meditate on the story of Job. Now, why do I say that? What gives me the reason to think that? Well, actually what he does is he quotes, and I didn't realize this until I started studying it a couple of weeks ago. He quotes directly from the book of Job in the passage that we just read. So in verse 19, He's quoting from Job chapter 13, verse 16, and he says this, I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, here's, here's the quote, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance or salvation or vindication. What's happened to me will turn out for my vindication is a direct quote, word for word from the book of Job. I love it. I love the fact that there is Paul experiencing his own suffering, reflecting on the mystery of Job's suffering, reflecting on the nature of Job's suffering, reflecting on God being present in his suffering, and then applying all of those lessons to his own life. It's quite a beautiful thing, actually, to think about. And maybe he's starting to think about, if Job can get through this, 
then maybe I could get through this with God's help too. And it's a sieve. He's looking out at a completely dark, black night sky. And he begins to see these twinkling stars in the darkness. And those begin to give him strength. So what are the realities? What are the stars? What are the things that he can focus on or draw strength from in these times of suffering? I've got a few things. The first thing is, the partnership of friends. Verse 19, he says, for I know, I know that through your prayers, what's happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. And what I realized when I started to meditate on this passage was, Paul actually believes that their prayers will make a difference. He actually believes that something will shift when his friends pray. Uh, I don't know whether you noticed this, but I really noticed it. When Boris Johnson, our prime minister, was unwell, critically unwell in uh, hospital a couple of weeks ago, uh, all of the world leaders took to podiums and to social media to send their love and, and best wishes for Boris. And they used all kinds of platitudes. So, for example, one said, I'm sending every good wish. And another one said, my thoughts are with him. You can imagine Paul sat there in prison thinking, I don't want good wishes. <laughs> you know, that's completely useless to me. I, I, I don't want warm thoughts. What I want you to do, my friends in Philippi, I want you to pray for me. And I don't just want you to pray to the genie in the bottle or, you know, the magical mystery man or to the ceiling or anything else. I, I, I want you to pray to God himself. I want you to pray to Jesus Christ because he's the one who changes things. I honestly believe that in this season of suffering, we must, in a kind of concerted and sincere way, pray for one another, partner together in prayer for one another to get through this. And uh, I'll just say this because I was thinking about it the other day. You know, sometimes people say, I don't really understand why the church didn't really help Barry when he was going through what he went through. Or I don't really understand why Larry, you know, didn't have much contact with the church when he was going through what happened to him. And do you know what the honest answer is for almost every single case of that is that we didn't know. Barry and Larry didn't tell anyone or they didn't tell us. And I just want to say this, if you are struggling right now, let somebody know and maybe let us know. You can let us know on the, if you're watching this live, you can just press on connect or you can just ask to pray with someone on the thing. But, yeah. but just let us know, let somebody know so that we can partner together in prayer. It would be our privilege to do that. So the partnership of friends, first thing. Second kind of glinting light in the dark sky is the presence of God. Verse 19 still. He says, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. God has given us, God has given us the Holy Spirit for moments like this. God has given us the Holy Spirit who provides comfort, peace, strength, exactly for moments like this. And we're not just talking about, again, warm, fuzzy feelings and platitudes. I, but it's absolutely clear that Paul is expecting and experiencing the, um, the tangible, experienced presence and power of God himself exactly where he is. It's a real thing. I can remember when my dad, I found out that my dad had just died. It was about 20 years ago. I was just a young Christian. I was walking from where I was living to back to my parents' home. And as I was walking along the road, I was praying and I was saying, God, please, would you give me strength? Please, would you give me the strength to be able to cope with this shattering, just brutal news? And please, would you give me the strength to be there for the rest of my family? And as I was walking along the road, I experienced the um, raw, holy, enveloping love and power and presence 
of God kind of wrapping around me and bubbling up within me as I walked along the road. That's what Paul's expecting. That's what he is longing for. That's what he's experiencing. And that's what you could experience. And later on, we're going to pray for a whole bunch of people uh, that, that you would experience God's presence with you right where you are. It doesn't matter where you are, right where you are. Okay. Uh, number three, uh, another thing that he can draw strength from is the peace of eternity. Verse 12, sorry, verse 21. Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's an astonishing thing to say, to say, especially when you consider that the Apostle Paul is in prison and it actually doesn't know whether like tomorrow he's going to be exonerated or executed. He doesn't know. And yet he says, ultimately, I'm drawing peace from the fact that I know exactly where I'm going. It's a powerful thing. Um, we ultimately don't know whether we're going to live for another year or another 90 years, do we? But ultimately, in this life, whether it's a year or 90 years, it's, it's like a blink of an eye in comparison with the millions upon millions upon millions of years that exist for us in eternity. And uh, what Paul's ultimately saying is, he's saying, I know where I'm going. I know that for eternity, I'm going to be with God. I'm going to be with Jesus. And so therefore, I can be strong in this present situation. I can be at peace. I love the final verse of that hymn, Amazing Grace, where it says, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. It's a lovely thing. It's a precious thing to be able to draw strength from knowing where we're going. And... Uh, do you know, in our world, we're squeamish about death. We don't like talking about death. We try to do everything to forget about death. And uh, we even try to make ourselves look like we'll never die with all kinds of uh, lotions and potions and injections. Although, uh, obviously, <laughs> you can tell. We, <laughs> we, we don't do that. We don't do that. Uh, but um, uh, moments like this, the coronavirus crisis, they provide us with an opportunity to realize how fragile life is how short life is, and how long eternity is. I don't know whether everyone watching this right now is a Christian. I don't know whether you know whether you're a Christian, but later on, we're gonna provide an opportunity for you to seal the deal, to secure your place, to make sure you know where you're going when you die. And that will provide, I can promise you, an enormous amount of assurance for the years ahead, and particularly for this season. Okay, the last thing is, and I'll finish with this, the last star in the dark sky is a purpose for the future. Paul says, verse 24, I want to depart and be with Jesus, which would be amazing. But it's better for you that I stay here. And so I'll stay for your progress and joy in the faith. And uh, do you see what Paul's doing here? He, he, he might be in lockdown. He might be in prison. He might be facing pretty bleak circumstances. But he's saying, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to give way to this situation. I'm going to begin to plan and to scheme and to dream about what I'm going to do on the other side when I get out of this place. I love that. And actually, don't you think it's interesting that it's almost as if all of the trappings of life are stripped away in these moments and you start to ask bigger questions and get some more clarity on exactly what you're for. He's so clear. He says, I am for helping you as you grow in the Lord. What if in this season, each one of us were to ask the question of God, God, what am I for? And it's as if life has been put on standby or mute. And suddenly we can begin to hear God say, this is what you're for. And then what if we were to ask, what does my life need to look like if that's what I'm for? Okay, I'm going to finish there and I'm going to pray for us. So like I said, I'm going to pray for all of us that God would fill us with his Holy Spirit, that he would envelop us with his presence and fill us with his power. And so uh, this might be new for you, but if you just want to sit uh, wherever you are, open up your hands and I'll pray. Father, please pour out your spirit right now. 
across this region, right into people's living rooms, wherever they are in the world. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And we'll just wait for a moment. The Bible talks about streams of living water flowing from within us. God, would you do that for us today? And not just today, but tomorrow, the day after. In a moment, we're going to have communion together. And I always think that almost the best possible moment to become a Christian is just before communion, because then you can immediately take communion and it means something so fresh and so new um, communion is really about for christians it's really about receiving afresh the forgiveness of god it's about making a fresh start with god and so in a way that would symbolize what you've already done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make an opportunity for you right now if you would like to commit your life to jesus and to get the kind of peace for all eternity that i've been talking about and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to say a prayer one line at a time. And you just need to repeat after me uh, just quiet, quietly or, or out loud or, or um, in your own heart even. And Jesus will hear every word. And also just to say, if you, if, this is kind of a public declaration in a way, which is hard to do when you're on your own. So if you're watching this live, you can click, I give my life to Jesus or I commit my life to Jesus uh, on the live screen live screen <laughs> live stream chat and it's actually in the chat section there you can click i i give my life to jesus and uh, we'll all know that you've done it then so let's pray together my father in heaven i'm so sorry i haven't lived my life with you or for you i really want that to change thank you jesus for dying on the cross for me Father, I receive your forgiveness into my life. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. Help me to live my life with you and for you from now on. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Good. And, and so if you have prayed that prayer. Remember to click the thing if you're watching it live to say that you've done that. And also, if you have clicked the thing, it's now saying to you probably something like request prayer. This is the moment to connect with one of our pastors to say hi and to have them pray with you, which would be a lovely thing to be able to do. That's one thing. A couple of other next steps for you right now is the Alpha course that we've talked about in previous weeks is, is, uh, has really just started, but this is the very last moment that you could join it and just kind of start to unpack what being a Christian is. And so you need to go on our website and find out about the Alpha course. And also James and Tori, who are two of our pastors, they uh, pastor our uh, Aberdeen Central Church, they are standing by and they're going to do it. This is kind of an experiment where they're going to do a live Zoom call after this. Yeah. And they'd love to chat to you too. Or if you're just new to church and you want to just chat to them and that is going to be on Zoom. And so the link for the Zoom call is in the notes section right now of the chat. Yeah. Yeah. We figured for some people, actually, it's just really nice to speak to someone rather than just do it all electronically. And so that is just an opportunity if you've pressed the button or you're new to faith or you're just exploring what that could look like for you, then why not have a coffee with them after this? We'd, why not? We'd love to invite you to do that. So we are going to take communion together. So why don't you get your bread and your wine or the equivalent? And I'm going to read today from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 25. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. 
In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this is the cup in the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. So, body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Jesus shed for you. Why don't we pray? Mm. We thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken and your blood that was shed so that we can be clean and fresh and whole because you took all our sin and all our shame. We thank you that today we are washed afresh. We are as white as snow and we celebrate that as we go into this week, cleaned, refreshed, eyes fixed on you. Mm. Amen. 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 Wow. This is a slightly clunky gear change now, but um, just very quickly uh, to talk about the notices. In fact, there aren't really any notices except just to say that normally if you are coming to one of our weekend services, we have about 12 weekend services in eight different places normally, um, there'd be a basket at the front for you to put money in. And uh, obviously we don't have a basket in your house. And so uh, if you're a regular member of our church and you would like to give, then the only way to do that right now is give.catalyst.vin online. So please do that if you're uh, if you want to do that. Yeah. And, and if you're visiting yeah. or you're kind of not a member of our church, please be our guest. Absolutely. Just, you are our guest. Absolutely. So we're really now at, at almost the very end of Church at Home. Uh, Scott and Sarah Robertson, who are the site pastors in our north site, um, are going to be um, praying a blessing over us. So why don't we head over to them now? Hey, we would love to pray this blessing over each and every one of you this morning. Mm -hmm. It comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. Bless you guys. Brilliant. Okay, well, I think we're nearly done. We are. So we're going to finish in a very unusual way now because uh, there's been a kind of a top secret project yes. happening for the last couple of weeks. Uh, the worship teams from about 70 different churches all over the UK have been collaborating together to produce a song of blessing to sing over the church in the UK and beyond. And uh, it's been our privilege to be involved in that. Uh, uh, and um, so watch out for people from our church. Um, so we'll say goodbye now and then we'll leave you with the blessing. So we will. God goodbye. Bless, God bless safe. you. See you soon. See ya.
second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations Children, and their children, may his favor be upon. 